Good morning students of grade 8. Today we are going to complete our lesson about the sound wave. First of all, we are going to make a brief revision about echo and then we are going to solve a simple exercise talking about echo. As we said before, echo is the reflection of sound wave, where when a wave strikes on an obstacle, it reflects and comes back to the source. That's why when we, we will hear the same sound again and again. The example shown in this picture in here, this boy is emitting a sound wave. When this wave strikes the wall, it reflects back and returns to the boy. Or in this picture in here, the equipment used is called a sonar, which is an equipment used to identify or calculate the depth of the sea, where this ship sends an ultrasound. When it reflects back, we can calculate the distance which represents the depth of the sea. Those two examples represent a brief example about echo. Now we are going to solve a sample exercise. In this exercise, a sonar produces sound waves of 50,000 to 200,000 vibrations per second. For a remind, the vibrations per second is the same as the hertz, which is the unit of frequency. This wave hit the bottom of the sea and an echo returns. Sonar capture the echo with their very sensitive and developed machines. As a result, they know the depth of the sea. Part A. Pick up the domain of frequency emitted by the sonar in hertz. As we said, the vibrations per second represent the same unit which is hertz. So the domain of frequencies are between 50,000 hertz and 200,000 hertz. Are these sounds audible by the human ear? Justify your answer. We know that the audible frequency of the human ear are between 20 and 20,000 Hz. Since the frequencies given by the sonar here are above 20,000 Hz, so this sound is not an audible sound. So no, they are not audible to human ear since they are above 20,000 Hz. Part B. A sonar sends a wave of 100 kilohertz. The kilohertz, to convert it into hertz, we must multiply by 1000. So it will become 100,000 hertz. Toward the sea bottom, situated at a distance d, and receive the echo after a time t equal 1.3 seconds. Given that the speed of the sound wave in water is v equal 1500 meter per second. We must be noted here that this time t equal 1.3 seconds is the time needed by the wave to get down to the bottom of the sea and to return back to the sonar. Okay, so this is the time of the echo. Part 1. Calculate the period and the wavelength of the wave emitted in water. So to find the period, we have the frequency in the given. So we use the relation between the period and the frequency, which is that period is equal to 1 over frequency. So 1 divided by 100,000, we must convert it from kilohertz into hertz. It will become 10 to the power minus 5 seconds. To find the wavelength, we use the relation between the speed, wavelength, and the frequency. This relation is V equal lambda times F as we talked about in the previous chapter. So, lambda will be equal V divided by F, 1500 divided by 100,000, it will become 0 0.015 meters. Part 2. Find the distance D capital covered by the wave after leaving the sonar until it returned to it. We know we need to find the distance D covered by the wave, but when it leaves the sonar and when it returns back to it. So this is the distance of the echo. We need to use the time of the echo, which is 1.3 seconds. So the only rule we can use to find this distance is V, the speed is equal to D over T. So distance is equal to V times T, 1500 times 1 1.3, it will become equal 1950 meter. This distance does not represent the depth of the sea. It represents the distance covered by this wave in the downward and the upward propagation. Finally, deduce the depth of the sea. To find the depth of the sea, this depth is half the distance D calculated in part 2. 
since the depth is only the distance of the downward transition or the distance of the upward transition. So the depth D is equal to D capital divided by 2, which is 1,150 divided by 2, 975 meters.